Yes, this is Gunnery Sergeant Target, United States Marine Corps here in Quantico, Virginia. Sir, ma'am, if you would, if this is James and Robin Carpenter, uh, please give us a call at your earliest convenience or as soon as you hear this message. Once we had received message about Kyle, at that moment we knew. I was just so broken, it just seemed surreal. You just can't bear your child to be injured and war is really ugly. The injuries that he sustained, I mean, you can't even imagine. Once he joined the Marine Corps, we were very proud but as a mom, I was just gripped with fear for what could happen. This is the day that he, he left for Afghanistan. You know, he was just a 19-year-old kid. You know, when the buses pulled off from here. I mean, I wanted to run and get him off. You know, I wanted to... <laughs> I had this motherly gut instinct that it was not going to turn out good. I remember we were flying in, and all I could think of was, am I going to die in that field? Am I going to step on an IED on that road? Until you're getting on those birds, you know, and you're flying over the farmlands of southern Afghanistan. At that moment is when, you know, this is about to be really real. In about 21 day stretch, we've been in 19 firefights. No type of fear gripped me like the fear of hearing the sounds of an IED go off. Someone that you love and care about had stepped on IED and not knowing his status or condition. You know, a true deep fear grips you. We drew straws for the mission that, that I got injured on. I don't remember seeing the grenade. I just remember falling face forward like an empty shell. My vision, it was just white and gray static. Blood started to pour out like someone was pouring warm water all over me. I knew that this was it. When I got to Kyle, the smell from it overwhelmed my senses. I was struggling to breathe. Uh, he asked if he was going to die, but I, I didn't know. As we got him up to the medevac out of there, he yelled out, I love you. We backed off and he was gone. You just cannot prepare yourself for when we saw him at the hospital. I mean, that grenade just tore his body apart. I just melted. I could not deal with seeing him like that. Uh, I mean, that wasn't my son. Um, and uh, the nurses had to escort me out. He had surgery on his brain to remove shrapnel. We didn't know if it was still gonna be Kyle once he woke up. My mindset was never, I might get injured. We're either coming back perfectly fine or we're coming back in a box. So when I woke up, I was very confused. The only thing I remember is opening my eye and seeing those stockings. It was around Christmas Eve. He was still the Kyle that we knew. It was just amazing. What had happened to him was just destroying us, but we got our strength from him. You know, I woke up. I had already been through, say, 20 surgeries. I knew I had 20 or so to go, and I knew I was going to be in the hospital for three years. You would think it would be a psychological burden. 
but my physical state consumed my mind and, and my emotions. It shaped everything for that hard three years. I remember going into this appointment. The only thing I asked him was, do you think I'll be able to do a pull-up? He almost laughed. You're joking, right? You're not. You broke your arm in 30 places and you severed most of the nerves in both of your arms and neither one of your arms or hands or your fingers work. And by the end of my three years at Walter Reed, I got up to 17. But once he got to that point when he was getting ready to be medically discharged, when it's all over with, it's like, you know, pulling a, the adrenaline plug out of your arm and you're just like, you know, what's now, you know, what's next? When I was at home and I couldn't, you know, just do the daily things and, and I had this massive breakdown moment, I just started crying and I fully and totally broke down. And of course, mom came in and I just told her, I said, look at me. And who's gonna love me after this? And at that moment, you know, I, I realized either I'm gonna move forward or I'm gonna sit right here at this kitchen counter for the next 80 years of my life. We are here because this man, this United States Marine, faced down that terrible explosive power that unforgiving force with his own body, willingly and deliberately, to protect a fellow Marine. When that grenade exploded, Kyle Carpenter's body took the brunt of the blast. The Medal of Honor is presented for gallantry on the battlefield, but today we also recognize Kyle Carpenter for his valor since, and the hard fight for recovery. Metal's hard, man. You know, the guilt of having the metal when those that never made it home should be wearing it. I still have Kyle. There's a lot of guilt that goes with it. I cannot even imagine the pain that he has suffered. When you see how he motivates and inspires others. I mean, that is certainly something really positive that, you know, that has come out of this. Not a single person came back unaffected. I was in a dark place for a long time, and you're so scared of being weak. For years, I buried it. I don't know, like, if you ever truly, like, fully heal from it. When I see Kyle now, it's not dark like it used to be. I've had Marines come up to me and tell me, I didn't kill myself because of your story, because of you, because I saw what you went through and you still came out on top. I don't know if I ever allow myself to feel vulnerable, or I don't know if I'm a concrete wall, but I'm, I'm here now. Out of the darkest of times that we've had, have been some of the greatest of things.